Next, we are pleased to have with us today Dr. Chomnyern Vorachaipan. And he is Senior Director of Thailand Environment Institute. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Vorachaipan. I'm very glad to be here. Friends of the earth, children of the planet, for the past 25 years I have been working with the local communities and environment as well as with the climate change. I would like to confirm for the beginning by saying that in order to have a real solution, in order to keep this planet, we have to change also from the within, from inside. And I would like to discuss and share with you in our own experiences of saying that we have to join hands in order to keep this planet for the next generation, not only for ourselves. We have heard from the beginning, all the scientists have said, all the predictions that have made, and all the impacts, whether agriculture, human health, infectiousness, and heat stress, and again and again, and emphasize that these are the real leader activities of the human hands and also from the human hearts and human minds, not only the purely externalities. And we have heard again and again how many senses of the temperature of the earth has increased and also faster, as Dr. Art Ong and other people has mentioned that than we thought and we have expected. And of course, the moderators, two of them are saying over here concerning the rise of the sea level as well, that how much and how fast that it has engulfed. And also the recent atmospheric CO2 has changed, as you mentioned. And we have heard and we have seen so many formulas, so many models that are really created by scientists in order to solve these problems. And we have to think that whether we rely on these models and science and technologies and on the calculations or not, or whether we should go deeper understanding what are the causes of this climate change. And of course that we can see recently about the carbon credit, as you know, and the scientists from the beginning has assigned and has created this mechanism and instrument in order to solve the climate change. And as we know that this economic instrument has become a mechanism for exploitation and also that extortion for the personal gain and personal benefit. I don't think that we can go far if we rely totally on these scientific models again and again. And as we can see from the beginning, are saying that whether this carbon trading is really contrary to the social justice, whether this carbon trade will strengthening the existing the inequalities or not. And we have again and again saying that the clean mechanism, the CDM, that supports a lot of direct impact on the human health also. And we have heard again and again on this in the past decade of saying that in order to restore our earth, that we have to protect ourselves in order to reduce the impacts as well as to reduce the damages. And we totally confirm in order to protect this beautiful planet, we have to join hands together with our own communities, as well as technicians, researchers, and also the government, 
and we have to adapt ourselves. The sense of adaptation, the ability in order to adapt ourselves to nature, that's really the big requirement of one of the solutions. And of course, not only the purely scientific and economic instrument, but we have to rely also on the local wisdom, as Dr. Art Ong has explained, that a lot of local wisdom has been utilized in order to protect this world and also the government policy. But on this, we have to identify where are the hot spots, where are the critical areas. And these, on these hot spots and critical areas have been increased um, tremendously for the past two decades. And the carrying capacity, the work that they have been doing with the local governments on these specific uh, issues, and I would like to confirm that still very low in order to cope with the natural disasters as well as the climate change. We have to join hands together in order to bring on the national as well as the local governments and also the community in order to solve the problems. I would like to share with our friends from abroad, particularly from Vietnam. Over here we have the His Majesty the King for the past several decades, he promoting and the government and the people also try to implement the sufficiency economy. And I think this is one of the great philosophy that we have to implement it in our country and try to link and, uh, between this philosophy and the climate change. And what we do that's a really by the middle path, by the use of the moderation and also reasonableness as well as the immune system in order to bring life and our economy as well as the social in a balanced way. And also we have been working a lot with the schools, more than 200 schools that we have been working uh, in the country and more than 200 local governments. We try to integrate mindful thinking and also the create the knowledge as well as the moderations in our way of consumption. And I totally agree with Dr. Art Ong and other people and know the saying over here, we should and we need to be vegetarians. We have to have ourselves immune in order to help ourselves as well as trying to make use of the science and technology to be implemented. This is an example that Thailand Environment Institute with the other private companies, we campaign in order to integrate into the school's network and try to integrate the global warming or climate change into the curriculum of the teachings of the eight subjects. We try to promote on the schools, whether elementary schools or secondary schools, in order to uh, know the, and their own environment and try to adapt the way that they consume in their schools. In order to promote the sustainable development, my friends of the earth, we have to think of our next generation, not our generation only. The, our future children, that's considered as a very important. There are many projects, whether small or big, we always do it for the sake of our own survival today, not the children of tomorrow. The sustainable development we have to attain. My friends, this is really the heart whether we would like to maintain this beautiful planet, our beautiful world. We cannot rely solely on the science and the technology. But what is really needed and what is it really bring about the sustainability is hidden inside our heart and our mind, spirituality. That spirituality really determines how we live with nature and how we live with other human beings. Spirituality that gives the meaning to the modes and determines the modes, the way we eat, the way we produce, whether in agriculture, whether in industry. 
There are so many modes of production and consumption that have been destroyed the world. And I totally agree with you and support that if we want to have the real the climate change for consumption that's more sustainable, it should be vegetarian. <laughs> Spirituality that can change the climate. That's really from inside that you change the outside. You have to think that's really in our mind and our hearts that determines whether this planet is sustainable or unsustainable. Whether we can do better or for worse, fundamentally is it really from within, from our own heart. And this is really what we have to bring about this awareness and our transformation and the source of all the values is really from within, not purely from outside. We all try, try to manage nature according to the human needs. We have to see that there's a really spirituality, there's really a, how to live with nature I have learned and I have taken from this a chart that's used by a teacher. This is the primary school for Patomsi. He brought that to me and he explained to me saying that Kalajamitra, benevolent friendships, is a very important for environment and very important for the climate change. And we're saying that what is really important in this message, they consider that human beings should respect trees, forests, water, soil, the sea, and also the sky as their good friends and not to be exploited. If we manage to live together with the good friends, we have a solution in order to keep this beautiful planet Earth. And a lot of local wisdom in Thailand over here, we have a Loi Kratong festival. This is a festival to pay the tribute to the water and also to ask for the pardon and they confess their sins to the earth and to the land and to the water. So I think that this is a really a good example for us. Kalajamitra, we need to change and we need to adapt ourselves with nature for the sustainability. I totally adore the gathering over here by your good heart and also your good works. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Warachai Pai, and thank you for your devoted attention. As you can see, our speakers today are highly committed to solution for climate change. Our next guest lecturers, Dr. Nguyen Tai Mengil, Chairman of Diet Association, has some valuable insights to share with us. Please give a big applause to welcome Dr. Nguyen Tai Mengil. Dr. Nguyen Thay Mengel earned her medical degree in pediatric from medicine and pharmacy university in 1987. In 2002, Dr. Nguyen earned a PhD in nutrition food science in Japan. After her return to Alak, Vietnam, Dr. Nguyen was appointed head of nutrition food research department, nutrition center from 2002 to 2006. Since 2006, Dr. Nguyen has been head of Applied Nutrition Food Science Organization, or ANFSO, and is chairman of Food Nutrition Association. Dr. Nguyen is greatly concerned about plant-based nutrition and regularly holds seminars to exchange knowledge of plant-based nutrition. Welcome, Dr. Nguyen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I appreciate the conference for giving me a chance to deliver my uh, presentation today. As you know, nowadays, the local health is not just of um, any country, but also a topic uh, of everyone, every country. The first challenge for global nutrition science is how to associate between human health and global health. That challenge requires global nutrition science to develop a new strategy. A new strategy of nutrition science is nutrition ecology. Allow me to emphasize two important points here. That is holistic and the second is the sustainability. Holistic means the whole. Sustainability means forever, long-term, lasting. So, both of them contributing to the quality of the nutrition system. I would like to mention four dimensions for achieving a nutrition system quality. It will bring the benefit for health, for environment, for society, and for economy. What dietary pattern is the best for nutrition system quality, also food chain quality? That is the vegetarian diet. So, in order to have a vegetarian diet, which condition of food is the best? That is, regularly produced. The second, food seasonal consumed and organic grow. There are many approaches to the global health. But from the nutritional point of view, I would like to mention two programs. The first, change to vegetarian diet in community. And the second, vegetarian diet for environment protection is still a new concept for people, for community, especially for government officials. Therefore, we are building action programs on research, on teaching, and on public action. We research on science evidence-based vegetarian diets we design a food choice guide for Vietnamese vegetarians. And we design a dietetic guide for special vegetarian diets. And research on holistic and sustainable food source. For teaching action, uh, we are taking vegetarian cooking classes, training courses of special vegetarian diets and publishing vegetarian diet cookbooks and nutrition books. How about public action? We are holding communication programs for community in order to inform community on principles of nutrition ecology. From that, they can change eating behavior. And at the same time, we are launching some activities the second approach we are implementing is towards the organic agriculture program. For small scale program, we focus society effectiveness. How to spread to community clean vegetable models at houses, at offices, and at schools. Now we are planning to carry out a project in Tien Yang, the province in the southern of Vietnam, on a kindergarten school in Tien Yang, uh, will develop clean vegetable models for schools. Also, we are taking practice classes on clean vegetable models for community and consulting technology and designing for community. 
for large-scale program, we focus financial effectiveness. We have a cooperative project on clean vegetables from farms and building strict evaluation processes on clean vegetables and put them into practice. In Vietnam, there is the proverb, one tree cannot do anything, but all trees can cooperate to do everything. So I think that the project can receive the cooperation from many countries, from many people, in order to get the global health, the planetary health. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nguyen. That was very, very uh, interesting. And thank you, everyone, for your attention. Up next to share his wisdom is Dr. Nguyen To Nyang, who will share with us his profound insights on global warming. Please give him a very warm round of applause as he comes up to the podium. Dr. Nguyen To Nyang earned his Doctor of Philosophy at the University of Paris, France, where he specialized in energy. He is the former advisor to the Asia-Pacific Regional Energy Development Program in Bangkok. He is former head of the Program of Energy and Environment of the International Organization of Francophone Countries, located in Paris. And he's an author. He wrote the book Energy and Climate Change. Doesn't that sound like a great book? Here is the good doctor to speak to us. Give him another round of applause, folks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to talk about how vegetarian diet can help protect the environment and to fight against climate change. And we can feel the consequences of climate change, like global warming, it's the elevation of temperatures, the worst temperatures. And also, another direct consequence of global warming is the sea level rise that will affect the life of millions of people living in low-lying deltas, like the place we are sitting now here. And also, we can cite the extreme events like a floods, droughts, heat waves, tropical cyclones, storms. Facing a so urgent and grave challenge, the United Nations found in 1988 the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. The IPCC had issued many very good reports, and the last one issued in 2007 had helped the IPCC earn the Nobel Peace Prize, together with former Vice President of the American, Anne Gore. The finding of the IPCC first the warming of the climate system is unequivocal. We have learned, the Dr. Schneider of Stanford University, speaking about that. And the second, the increase of the global average temperatures very likely due to the increase of anthropogenic greenhouse gases. IPCC recommended two lines of action. First is adaptation to climate change, and second, mitigation to reduce greenhouse gases emissions. To understand the greenhouse gases effect, we can see that our planet receives energy from the sun and it will radiate it back energy. But this energy radiated by the Earth will be intercepted and absorbed by the layer of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. It will make the atmosphere warmer and the surface of the Earth will be warmer. It's the greenhouse effect. Scientists of the IPCC had measured with precision the rise of temperatures on the Earth. And we've seen on the graph that the temperatures are rising. And they can use scenarios to predict the global warming in the future 
at least in the next century, uh, this century, 21st century. And at the end of the 21st century, in the most favorable conditions, they see that the temperatures will rise about 1.8 degrees C. And in the most unfavorable conditions, the temperatures will rise above 4 degrees C. And it must be kept under 2 degrees C in order to avoid the dangerous consequences to the Earth. Global warming can be seen on this picture. We have two pictures of the Patagonia glacier in South America. In the first picture taken in 1928, we can see lots of ice. In the second picture, in 2004, all the ice had been melted away. And this is another consequence of global warming. It is the sea level rise that can be measured by indirect measurements, by constant tide gauges, and recently by satellite telemetry. The sea level rise would be very dangerous for all of us living in low-lying delta. And we can see that if the level of the sea rise about one meter above this level, there will be many places, many delta regions will be flooded. From many years until uh, the 18th century, the carbon dioxide concentration is constant at 280 parts per million. But from the year 1750, it is considered as the beginning of the industrialization era, there is a sharp rise of the concentration and also the sharp rise of the temperatures. The two other greenhouse gases are methane and nitrous oxide. From 1970 to 2000, the greenhouse gases concentration rose 70% from 28.7 billion of tons to 49 billion of tons. According to the state report of the United Kingdom, the food production will be affected and we will have many famine and hunger in many places, especially in Africa. Meat consumption is considered as one of the causes of the greenhouse gases emission. And we have seen that meat consumption has risen very fast from 1950 to 2000. The meat production in the world had risen from 45 million of tons to 233 million of tons. It would be fivefold while the world population increased only two times. The livestock sector, it's the rearing of animals for meat, required large area of land. For example, 70% of the Amazon forest was clear as grazing pastures and large spots used for growing feed crops. And one kilogram of beef need seven to 16 kilograms of soybean. So when we convert the vegetable to meat, we have wasted a large percentage of protein. We wasted until 90% of protein, 99% of carbohydrate, and 100% of fiber. In the meat, there was no fiber. And also, the livestock sector use a large quantity of water. And the water is now considered in deficit in many regions in the world for human consumption. One kilogram of maize needs 900 liters of water to be produced, and one kilogram of beef needs 15,500 liters of water. Animal production is a very grave problem because air pollution by the methane or by ammonium and livestock responsible for 60% of anthropogenic ammonia emissions. In water pollution, 
We have nitrates, phosphorus, growth promoters like antibiotics, hormones, heavy metals, bacterial and viral pathogens that is discharged into water sources. And also pesticide and chemical fertilizers for feed crops also discharged in water for human consumption. That is very dangerous for human consumption. And also we can have waste from slaughterhouse or tanneries. The greatest contribution of the livestock sector to the climate change is the greenhouse emission. And uh, we have seen that 18% of the total greenhouse gases is emitted by the livestock sector. When you consider that all the use of fossil fuel in the transportation sector by air, by sea, or by road combined, it represents only 14%. And so it's lower than the emission of greenhouse gases by the livestock sector. The different parts of the livestock production emit large part of greenhouse gases, like the deforestation, manure, enteric fermentation. This is the fermentation inside the digestive tube of ruminants. When you compare to the vegetarian diet, you can see that a vegetarian diet, no meat and no milk for one person during one year, correspond to gas emission of 629 kilometers of car driving. Why? A diet of non-vegetarian correspond to 4,769 kilometers. It means that it will emit 7.5 times more carbon dioxide than the vegetarian diet. Uh, Dr. Rajendri Pachauri is chairman of the IPCC who led the work of more than 3,000 scientists during 20 years to study climate change had switched to vegetarian diet some 10 years ago. And he's uh, proud of announcing that during that decade of eating no meat, he had contributed to taking away from the atmosphere 12 tons of carbon dioxide. In the city of Ghent in Belgium, the people there decided to initiate a program of what is called the Vegetarian Thursday. If every one of us decided to eat less meat or no meat starting for today, we can be proud of participating in the great movement of saving the planet against the dangerous climate change in addition to the obvious benefits of our health and our spiritual beliefs. So think positive and act positive. In conclusion, I would like to quote a phrase by Albert Einstein, the greatest scientist of the 20th century, Einstein, who is ahead of his time, he has an extraordinary vision, and he said that nothing would benefit human health and increase chances for survival on life on Earth as much as the evolution to a vegetarian diet. Thank you, Ganesh. Our sincere thanks to Dr. Ling Toyang for sharing his profile inside with all of us. Let's have a more round of applause to thank our lecturers for sharing their beneficial information and effective solutions in order to help curb global warming. We pray that all world citizens will grasp the message expressed by the lecturers and quickly take action to save this beautiful planet. Yes, we can! Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to introduce our special guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai. The world 
is very fortunate to have the presence of Supreme Master Ching Hai because, as we've said earlier, she's an outstanding spiritual teacher. She's a humanitarian and a talented artist. But to us, Master Ching Hai is more than that. She's the best teacher anyone could ever ask for. <laughs> yeah. She is our mother, our father, our brother, our sister, all rolled into one. She's our hero. She's our role model. And she's a lot more than that. She teaches us to be noble human beings, to tread lightly on the planet, and to treat animals as equals. She's the best friend anyone could ask for. She wakes us up on the inside so that we can do the work with love and not ego. And on occasion when we fall down, she gently picks us up, dusts us off, and gives us some hope one more time. She teaches us to never give up. And we're just really happy to say that about her. And she has won so many awards. Again, it's very rare that individuals get to experience the great love and compassion of a great master. So we're all very, very lucky to have her with us here today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right now is the most anticipated part of our program. It's so exciting for us, right, brother? Yes. Yeah. The question answering session to questions from the distinguished guests and the audience. And Supreme Master Ching Hai will share her profound point of view about global warming and kindly answer your questions through live broadcast television. Meanwhile, we also have a panel of uh, experts, which includes leading scientists in research and study of uh, climate change. We'll be inviting them to come up here shortly. <laughs> They're also ready to answer your questions. So welcome to the questions and answers session with Supreme Master Ching Hai and our panel of experts. Sawadika. Master, we want to thank you for the opportunity of accompanying you on this noble mission. It's a privilege. Every day we get very uh, excited because we're seeing more and more positive movement towards uh, saving uh, the planet. We know there's a bit of work to do, but we've got 5,000 more committed people here today who are happy to help us. Isn't that exciting? Are they committed? <laughs> <laughs> Master, let me ask the audience here. Uh, remember what we said earlier about what, what Mr. Obama said? If Master asked you that question, can we do it? What are you going to say? Yes, we can. So we use the slogan from the President of the United States, will he mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he's a pretty loving president. Yes. Master, before we uh, move into the question and answer period, um, would you like a moment to share some additional thoughts with the audience, or what would you like to do? Ah, sure. Whatever you command. <laughs> <laughs> You see, uh, I'm so happy to see so many people who reserve their precious time to organize this event and so many audience who are so enthusiastic and supportive of this life-saving mission. I thank you all, the organizers, all the panelists, the speakers, and the audience. May God bless you. Thank you, Master. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back to the stage the following experts who will form our panel for this afternoon's questions and answers sessions. So please welcome Dr. Ad Ong Chum Sai Na Ayutthaya, Dr. Chimnim Warat Chai Pan, Dr. Nguyen Thai Mengel, and Dr. Nguyen Thoi Yang. Yes, I have been uh, listening to them and watching their distinguished uh, presentation. They were so awesome. Aren't they awesome? Yeah. Let's applause again. <laughs> Thank 
Master, our audience has so many questions for you. I think what we will do is to have you answer three questions. Yeah. And then we will have one of our expert panel members answer a question. Yes. Whatever you uh, design and organize is fine with me. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Master. This uh, first question for you, Master, is from Dr. Van Manas Siri Sombun, Associate Professor of Department of Agriculture Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, King Mongkut Institute of Technology. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Panamos. Yes, good afternoon, Supreme Master. Uh, Sawadika. Uh, I do agree with the not eating animal, not to harm them. Yes. And yes. I do enjoy the conference to get uh, information about the effect of being vegetarian for the world. My question is, does eating meat really change the weather condition of the world to a critical stage? Does uh, eating vegetarian food really help this same condition of the world to be better? Hello, Dr. Siri Sombun. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, Thank you for your insightful question. The answer is yes and yes. The reason is very scientifically clear and proven. With the United Nations report called Livestock Long Shadow, the famous one that everybody knows, it documents the detrimental impact of meat consumption on global warming, saying that a full 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions were produced by livestock raising for meat, and that this sector was responsible for more total emissions than all sectors of transportation combined. As you have uh, heard from uh, our distinguished panelists, speakers earlier on, the report is really very alarming for us. And since that 2006 report, even we heard some worse things. Scientists like Dr. T. Colin Campbell have received updated information that more than 60% of the intensively warming greenhouse gases are coming from the livestock sector. The problem is worsened by the fact that Methane, one of the main greenhouse gases emitted through livestock raising, traps some 72 times more atmospheric heat than other gases, even like CO2 that everyone was talking about. CO2 is not the worst. Carbon dioxide is not our worst threat. Methane is and methane came from livestock raising. So all of these leads to significant weather disruptions. In 2006, China's Meteorological Administration noted that uh, global warming was causing the strength of typhoons to increase, causing the destructiveness of those making landfall to become greater and causing their travel to be further than before. Time magazine reported U.S. researchers finding that uh, the top wind speeds of the Earth's strongest storms have increased significantly since 1981, resulting in some of the disastrous effects we have seen over the past few years. And just this week, Morakot, Rock Harvard everywhere, especially in the Asian Far East, Taiwan. Uh, more than 500 people fear dead and many more missing 
600 villages buried under mudslide because of this. And the search is still going on for the missing person. And Taiwan government even appealed for international help to assist those trapped by this disaster. They're still not rescued yet. So livestock raising for meat surely leads to an environmental crisis. But in response to the second part of your question, Dr. Siri Sambon, a vegetarian or diet free of animal traces does benefit the world immensely. Scientists have already shown that organic vegan diet can reduce the economic cost of halting global warming by 80%, 80% cost reduced if we are organic vegan. This is uh, in addition to the direct planet cooling advantages of removing methane from the atmosphere. We can only imagine what our world would be like without these harmful emissions. It can be restored very swiftly to a lush green oasis that supports all life. So I strongly encourage all to be veg, Dr. Siri Sambun. And please spread the word to others, as many as you can. It is absolutely the best thing for the health of our planet and for our health as well. Thank you, Doctor. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola reston virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella. Bird flu, mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease or PMWS. Listeriosis, shellfish poisoning. Preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility, eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease, over 17 million lives lost globally each year. The cost of cardiovascular disease is at least one trillion US dollars a year. Cancer, colon rectal cancer, over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental uses up to 70% of clean water, pollutes most of the water bodies, deforests the lungs of the earth, uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, causes world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Cowpox from milking cows. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis, classified as a major allergen. 
lactose intolerance, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Next question, Master, is from Vung An, monochord instrumentalist. Kính thưa Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư, Kính thưa quý vị khán giả, Con thực sự xúc động khi được vinh dự đến dự hội nghị lần này. Kính thưa Ngài, Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư, con và các bạn của con xin tri ân những đóng góp của Ngài trong việc kiến tạo một thế giới tốt đẹp. Thưa Ngài, nhờ sự dẫn dắt của Ngài, nhân loại cũng đang trên đà chuyển biến theo một chiều hướng tích cực. Tuy nhiên, sự thay đổi đó có đủ nhanh chóng và kịp thời để ngăn chặn sự hâm nóng của toàn cầu, cứu vãn địa cầu xinh đẹp này hay không? Thưa Ngài. Chào cô Vân hả? <cười> Madame Vân Ân, <cười> not quick enough yet at the moment. I wish we could be much quicker, like yesterday, yes. But we still have hope, yes? I appreciate your concern and certainly hope that all beings and the planet can be saved. Perhaps we cannot save all, but we can save the majority if we hurry up. Uh, this is why the members of our association and myself, as well as the staff at the Supreme Master Television, are working as much as we can to get the message out to the world about the dire state of the globe and the rescuing vegan solution. Scientists have already stated that the livestock industry is the single highest human cause of methane gas in the world. Everything is heating up so quickly, as we can see from the scientists' report, on such alarming upheaval, such as rising sea levels and glacier melting. In your country, our lack, or Vietnam, you probably know of global warming-related problems such as the untimely uh, flooding and encroachment of the sea of the Mekong Delta region, both of which have caused havoc and further threat to the region's vital rice and fruit crops. This is due to the uh, combination of sea levels rising along with the effect of melting glaciers, which are now causing excessive floods, but eventually will cause drought and vastly diminished water supplies as well. So we must work quickly to avoid such unwanted outcomes, and the most effective way, as I have mentioned, is the organic vegan diet, organic vegetable farming, yeah? This is also the fastest way to reverse the increased warming climate to prevent further damage and disaster. If everyone does this, be veg, the earth will begin to cool and we will have more time to implement the measures to uh, eliminate other carbon emissions. Not only that, through the organic veg diet worldwide, we will see the planet revived to her original beauty and flourishing state, even more so in the future. So please be veg and tell everyone else of these benefits. The more people who understand and change, the more chance our world will be saved in time. Cảm ơn Văn Anh. Thank you, Master. Thank you. European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. 
During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a Vice President. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. Tout le monde sait bien, si on veut rendre notre planète soutenable, il va falloir réduire notre consommation de viande, ça on sait bien. My name is Jan Solm, I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green, save the planet. Our next question is from Nguyen Thuy Ngoc Ang, PhD, Head of Environment Department, Hombang University, and he's a vegetarian. Hello. Greetings, <laughs> Supermaster Chin Hai. Greetings, Madam Ngoc Ang. <laughs> I am very happy to you again. I'm happy to see you again, too. <laughs> Professor, humankind is uh, trying greatly hard to change. If, unfortunately, these efforts are not quick enough to save us, then what will be the factor of disaster uh, population and how is the end environment? Thank you very much. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming here with us again. Yes, uh, Dr. Nguyen, mm. thank you for caring. I know that there are many, many people who are making the effort to change, and all the green developments like the sustainable energy technologies and water-saving technologies, these are also very good. It's just that they will not accomplish the goal of saving the planet quickly enough. The rapid rate at which the planet is warming can be seen from many examples, one of which is the melting of the Arctic ice. A recent report released by the United States National Snow and Ice Data Center found that the rate of Arctic ice melt has been speeding up dramatically. With a shrinkage during the month of July equal to 41,000 square miles each day, Meanwhile, Canadian researchers have already forecast that the entire Arctic ice cap would be gone within a couple of decades, maybe quicker. As the ice disappears, global warming accelerates because of losing the reflective white cover provided by the ice. The scientists also reported that Arctic tundra temperatures have been rising one degree Celsius each decade, which is faster than anywhere else in the world, and that the tundra itself is emitting significantly more methane and nitrous oxide than previously estimated. This is a dangerous situation, apart from what we are already having. How do we stop this? The most effective way and the way that truly works is be veg, be vegan. Stop the use of all animal products and the globe will quickly cool down. We can still continue developing all the other green technologies after the planet is saved and we have time which are very good in helping restore parts of the overall planetary balance. But the first and foremost must be the veg diet. And with that approach, we are working toward being able to save the world because the switch to the animal-free diet removes all the methane production and its associated pollutants, to say nothing of the animal cruelty, will help 
reverse these planetary disasters, such as the tsunami, the flood, storm, typhoon, and the landslides, extra, etc. So, Dr. Nguyen, in order to help the environment and save lives, we first must be veg. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Master. Thank you very much. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat because at the difficult time of birth there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible Confucianism All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius Essenes I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood. And if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve Hinduism since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures, lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. 
The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants, I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. This next question is for Dr. Mangel from Pham Man An and Vegetarian. Dr. Mangel, you are known to be an active supporter for the vegetarian lifestyle and have been very active to spread this compassionate way of living to the outlaw seas people. Could you please let us know about the successes and difficulties that you have had in the process of implementing this meaningful mission? Will the Alexis people realize that the importance of the vegetarian diet in regards to their health and the health of the planet that quickly changed their way of life? Thank you for your question. Firstly, I would like to confirm that um, not only totally me, but also uh, nutrition science support uh, vegetarian diet uh, means a plant based diet. Correct. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation above, in Vietnam, vegetarian diet has been non way taught uh, to um, a religious practice. So I think um, scientists in Vietnam. Uh, will research on a food choice the guide for Vietnamese vegetarians. I think uh, many science-based evidence for vegetarians that is the strong base for convincing community to change uh, from non-vegetarian diet into vegetarian diet in future. I am sure that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is for you, Master. And this one is from a composer and a vegetarian, Thai An. Hi. Chào sư phụ. Chào. Dạ, con hoàn toàn ủng hộ giải pháp trường trai từ bi mà Ngài đã tự ái nghĩ trình. Xin Ngài khai thị thêm phải chăng lối sống thuần trai hữu cơ không những là giải pháp hữu hiệu nhất để cứu địa cầu mà còn là diễn ảnh của một lối sống cao thượng trong tương lai. Khi mà địa cầu hợp nhất với các chúng sanh khai ngộ trong giải ngân hà. Hmm. Big vision, eh? Yeah. Mr. Thai à. Yes, just like his name. His name means great peace. Ah. <laughs> Chào anh Thái An. Yeah. How are you today? Good? Yeah. I'm very glad. I'm glad to hear <laughs> that you support the vegan solution. It is a true solution. Yes, and it is the most effective way to save the planet. The reason is based on the significant planet cooling effect of removing methane from the atmosphere, which happens when we switch to the organic vegan diet. And besides removing the harmful methane emissions, organic tilling methods can actually store 40% of the carbon back into the soil. So, to be vet is a way 
to not only eliminate significant emissions, but to absorb even more carbon from the atmosphere. The organic approach also does not apply harmful chemicals like the ones used for conventional farming. This is very reassuring for anyone who has children, especially as the recent studies show that young persons are particularly vulnerable to the toxic effects of pesticides. So the organic vegan diet is multifold beneficial. Forests also play a tremendous role in absorbing CO2. For example, the forests in the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. are able to absorb half of all the emissions of the state of Oregon, USA. So we should protect our forests as well, especially from clearing for cattle grazing and for animal feed growing because these activities even add back many times more greenhouse gases. Most of the deforestation in our world is due to animal raising, taking up a staggering one-third of the entire land area on the globe. Now you ask about a vision of Earth merging with others in the galaxy. That's a big vision. We only need to look at our own neighboring planet, Mars and Venus, to see that the vision is bleak, is disastrous, if we don't make the right choice, the right change. Now, any planetary scientist knows that Mars and Venus went through dramatic atmospheric changes in the past, similar to what we have begun to experience right now. Long ago, Mars and Venus were once a lot like our planet. They had water, life, and people similar to us. But the inhabitants of Mars and Venus destroyed their respective planetary homes because they raise too much livestock, and the gases released trigger an irreversible greenhouse gas effect, plus poisonous hydrogen sulfide in the case of Mars. So that's why we see only the traces of the landforms and oceans that once used to be there. And on Venus, the atmosphere is so heated and choked up with CO2, carbon dioxide, yeah? Scientists thus call it runaway global warming and say this is what the future of Earth might be like. So let's not end up like either Mars or Venus, our neighboring planet. Also, once we stop the killing, then we will generate a more loving, kind, and inviting atmosphere for other noble beings in the galaxy to perhaps join us or be in contact with us. But regardless of the contact with the other beings, humanity must uphold a gentler, higher standard for the earth to continue supporting life this greater virtue is absolutely necessary for the conscience to be at peace. So beyond the physical consideration of things like methane gas and toxic chemicals, there is also the spiritual consequence of killing. Killing is still in life the most precious gift to any physical being. Animals are killed for meat consumption in the cruelest ways imaginable that make us human the cruelest beings on the planet. We are the cruelest being on the planet. I don't know if we should call ourselves civilized rate of being. 
The degrading practice of killing must stop. The killing must stop, and we replace it by virtuous ways of life that are also peaceful and kind. If all of humanity turns to such a standard, this world will be transformed indeed, heralding a true golden age of harmony and happiness for all beings. Let's pray that it will be so. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Tai An. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of the total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger, free up 3.4 billion hectares of land, free up 760 million tons of grain every year, half the world's grain supply, consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production, reduces pollution from untreated animal waste, maintains cleaner air, saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year, stop 80 percent of global warming, plus more. Master Dr. Gao Te Ha couldn't make it today due to his work. However, um, I'm going to read his question. Hi, please. <laughs> he said, Dear Supreme Master Ching Hai, I'm very concerned about the effects of climate change and global warming on Olak, especially the southwestern region, the granary of Olak, where people are still impoverished. Yes. Please shed some light on the following questions. How much longer and what is the size of land that will be underwater? How many people will be affected? Could it be possible that the fertile rice fields in the southwestern region will turn into human type of salt water swamp? At that time, could science create food bearing plants or some kind of plant that is valuable and salt bearing? In summary, what should we do to help the farmers in the Mekong Delta? Thank you, Master. Yes. Please relate to Dr. Kao that I thank him for his uh, caring question and the urgent tone of this question. It is clear from his question that uh, he is very familiar with the unfortunate series of global warming events in the once fertile and lush Mekong Delta region. As we discussed briefly in a previous question, this situation is serious indeed. A combined report from experts at the United Nations, Care International, and the U.S.-based Earth Institute forecast that more than 14 million farmers would lose their rice fields if sea levels rise by two meters. Already, the growers are seeing salt water contamination in some crops along with the excessive flooding that ruins harvest. Scientists say that the floods are due to upstream melting glaciers, which cause the rice to be inundated at a time when it needs to be dry. Moreover, as the glaciers continue to melt, the great Mekong River will begin to dry because there's no more support of flowing water, meaning further hardship 
for farmers as water becomes more scarce. As uh, it currently supports 18 hydropower stations as well. The drying of the Mekong River would also have adverse effects on power supplies. And the drought combined with sea level rise would cause further salt water contamination. The government has institute programs to relocate people whose homes and growing areas are most vulnerable to these effects. But this does not really address their livelihoods or how to save the crops. Research indicates that uh, a one meter sea level rise could result in up to two million hectares of land in the Mekong Delta being submerged. Depending on how quickly global warming accelerates, this could happen in a matter of years. As for how to best help the farmers in the Delta region to cope with this urgent problem, I also wonder myself. It concerns me deeply to see the effects of global warming on this region. Dr. Kao mentioned scientists developing a salt-bearing plant. Perhaps we can. Perhaps not. Even if we can, imagine. You see, some researchers have suggested building additional levees to hold back the floodwaters. Both of these ideas could probably work over the short term and would help for a little while, but not for long term. We have to ask ourselves for how long and at what price this will work. What kind of world will we have left if these uh, global warming changes continue? What kind of drinking water, what kind of air we will have, even if the rice plants can grow in salt water? This is a complex ecosystem with a long, long history of supporting human life. So there is no easy answer. But the most effective one I know, which is so simple, easy, and also scientifically proven, is to adopt a meat-free, animal-free lifestyle. If everyone stops the killing and consumption of meat, these destructive changes will also stop. Just be veg and do good. That's all there is. This is really the way to go. It is the best thing to help us, to help the farmers and the entire country of Vietnam, not just the Mekong Delta. If you turn in this direction and get as many people as possible to come with you, Dr. Cao, I guarantee that you will see good changes around you. And you will be proud to walk the earth as a compassionate vegan and earth protector. Thank you. Thank Dr. Cow for me. Tell him he has my prayers and good wishes. Thank you, Master. We will do that. So the next question for you is from Fan Bung Joy. MD, Surgeon, Trauma, and Rehabilitation Hospital, and is a vegetarian as well. Ah, good news. Hello. Warm yeah. greetings, Master Chin Hai. Greeting, greeting. I'm uh, really happy to be here and uh, so excited. <laughs> Me too. You have said that the critical mass of vegetarians on the planet have been reached, Master. What's the current situation of the critical mass and what's the percentage has been reached? Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, Dr. Pham. Man yoi, Doctor. Yeah? Yeah, come on. You are a surgeon, huh? Yes. Wow. Thanks for being such a life saving hero. Uh, Dr. Pham, as you are aware, the critical mass in this case means that the number of people on earth who have adopted the vegan lifestyle has become high enough 
that it helps create a kind of momentum, you see, for others to be more open to join. This number was reached in June of this year, 2009. Till now, we have altogether 40% of the population on the planet that have become veg, uh, including vegetarian and vegan, uh, including waterian, solarian, breatharian, panarian, meaning people who only live on water, who only lives on liquid, who only lives from solar energy, and only live on the qi, you know, the uh, prana energy, or on love from the divine. Okay? So now we have 40% of all this combination. This is surely encouraging. We need only another 60%, <laughs> Dr. Fa. <Pham. laughs> However, we are still working hard to spread the veg message, so it helps if we all continue informing as many people as we can, not just sit and wait for the critical mass to take effect. It's very simple for everyone. Just be veg, and we still can save the planet. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next question, Master, is from Nguyen Wan Tin, MD, Physician at the Center for Education Lover Society. Kính thưa Ngài Thái Hải Vô Thượng Sư. Chào, Dr. Nguyen. Dạ vâng, chào Ngài Thanh Hải ạ. Với tư cách là một bác sĩ chăm sóc và điều trị cho những người nghiện ma túy, tôi muốn biết Ngài đánh giá như thế nào về tác hại của ma túy đối với sức khỏe và cuộc sống sinh hoạt của những người, của con người cũng như những ảnh hưởng nguy hại của nó đối với môi trường sống. Xin cảm tạ Ngài rất nhiều ạ. À, cảm ơn bác sĩ đã đến tham dự và quan tâm. À, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nguyễn Văn Thịnh, yeah, for your concern. First of all, I admire your work in helping people uh, to become free of harmful effect of the uh, addictive substance. And I also thank you for your recognition of the lethal effects of meat, alcohol, tobacco, and illegal drugs, which are or top killers. In fact, uh, Supreme Master Television has devoted an entire website section to information about these harmful substances, available at www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers for anyone to research and further their knowledge. Some of the tragic tolls of alcohol 2.3 million alcohol-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of alcohol-related illnesses, 186.4 billion U.S. dollars in the United States. Up to 210 to 665 billion U.S. dollars globally. Disease. Higher amounts of alcohol increase the cancer risk. Even half a glass of wine daily increases the risk of mouth or throat cancer by 168%. Cancer of the liver, breast, colon, esophagus, rectum. Liver disease. Cardiovascular disease. Metal toxicity. Brain damage. Amnesia and dementia. Brain shrinkage. Organ failure. Heart, liver, kidneys, stomach, pancreas, eyes, birth defects, children afflicted by anxiety and depression, mental retardation, fetal alcohol syndrome, stunted growth, facial deformity, sudden infant death syndrome, miscarriage. Alcohol-related violence, child abuse, 50% of cases, violence toward loved ones, 30% of cases, violent acts, 40 to 80 percent of cases. Suicides, 20 to 50 percent of cases. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com 
forward slash killers. Some of the tragic tolls of tobacco. 5.4 million smoking related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of smoking related illnesses. 96 billion US dollars in the United States alone. Light and mild cigarettes just as harmful. Causes cancer and diseases in animal companions. Speeds the aging process. Toxic residues of third hand smoke. Heart disease, coronary thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis, kidney failure. Cancer, mouth, liver, breast and colorectal cancer. Lung cancer, esophagus cancer, kidneys cancer, bladder cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis. Stroke, impotence, additional harms for secondhand smoking, childhood arteriosclerosis leading to heart attacks and strokes in adulthood, sudden infant death syndrome, infertility, miscarriages and premature deliveries, childhood asthma, bronchitis, ear infection, cleft lip or palate, hyperactivity and aggression in asthmatic boys, circulatory problems in women, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. As for the terrifying impact of illegal drugs on human health, activities, and the environment, it is indeed very severe. To begin with, illegal drugs are linked to criminal behavior, with 50% of uh, United Kingdom burglaries committed by drug users and 60% of all U.S. arrests involve people who take illegal drugs. Other statistics are too numerous to cite here, but uh, it's easy to see the degraded moral atmosphere created by drugs one that will only get worse until the harmful substances are stopped. In fact, uh, one study in England found that nearly 90% of drug-related hospital consultations for mental and behavioral problems resulted in hospital admissions, with some 85% requiring emergency admission. This is terrible to think of the mental agony that the drugged people have to go through. So in addition to its very high financial and social cost, drug taking often results in both mental and physical torment to the user. These are some of the costs of drugs that are more obvious and measurable, perhaps less easy to quantify but equally tragic are the costs to others. Uh, often the addicted person doesn't even know how much the family suffer due to his or her behavior, which can be criminal and destructive and violent. And the drugged person can influence others, especially if that person is a parent, because the child learned this behavior from innocence, not knowing any better. Even if the drug addict doesn't die, the real person inside is lost to those around them and to him or herself. And when they are being manipulated by the drug, they can also be dangerous to others and or to themselves. As for the environmental impact, it is also very steep. Uh, in countries such as uh, Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia, four hectares of rainforest being destroyed for every hectare of cocaine produced, while nearly 15,000 tons of related chemicals are dumped into the Amazon River basin each year in its production. Another very damaging drug called Methamphetamine generates five to six pounds of hazardous waste 
for every pound of drug produced. This contaminates the water table and creates public health hazard. And uh, in Cambodia, a rare sassafras producing tree is becoming even more rare, more endangered due to illegal harvesting of its roots for the drug called ecstasy. Wildlife experts say that uh, the tree's further destruction could render it extinct. Many religious scriptures forbid intoxicants, such as drugs, because they block the development of spiritual wisdom and intelligence. In Buddhism, for example, it is known that the one who breaks this precept and indulges in intoxicants will likely break all other moral precepts along with it. So, on the other hand, refraining from drugs not only contributes to happiness in the family and peace in the society, but it also helps further the goal of cultivating spiritual wisdom. I wish dearly for a world where such substances as illegal drugs no longer exist. Meanwhile, the good news is that rehabilitation programs such as yours are shown to be very effective. Several different studies conducted in both the United States and the United Kingdom have shown that people who undergo rehabilitative therapy are able to cleanse their systems and tend to stay drug-free for a long time or forever. One study found that over 70% of people participating in treatment programs, both while in prison and after, remain drug-free a year after their release, with increased law-abiding rates. So once again, Dr. Nguyen, bravo! Thank you. <laughs> and please keep up the good work. I thank also people and organizations like yours. Yes. Dr. Nguyen, if our world becomes free of all the top killers, free of meat, free of alcohol, free of tobacco, and free of illegal drugs, then we will have a paradise on earth. What a beautiful world that would be, huh? Thank you, huh? Thank you for your contributions to this noble ideal and dream world vision. And we pray that our people soon know the benefits of such freedom. What a wonderful world it would be. Yes. Some of the tragic tolls of addictive drug abuse. Over 200,000 deaths each year. Costs of 181 billion U.S. dollars each year in the United States. 33 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Lifetime cost of current drug addiction amounts to 575 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Harmful effects, brain damage, stroke, heart disease, liver disease, tuberculosis, emphysema, cancer, depression, suicide, permanent memory loss, mental illness, higher infant mortality, increased crime and violence, impotence. Crime and violence. Illegal drugs are a factor in 50% of burglaries in the United Kingdom each year. In the U.S., 60% of people arrested each year have been taking illegal drugs. 650 heroin addicts in the U.S. committed 70,000 crimes in a three-month period. Social costs. U.S. businesses lose 100 billion U.S. dollars per year due to employees' drug and alcohol abuse. Australians pay 53 billion U.S. dollars per year for health care, law enforcement, and lost productivity of drug users. Environmental costs. Every gram of cocaine produced destroys 4.4 square meters of rainforest, with 300,000 hectares of rainforest lost each year to cocaine production. Death. 52 people die each day due to drugs in the U.S. In Canada, substance abuse is attributed to 21% of total deaths and 23% of potential life years lost due to early mortalities. 
plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Next question for Master is from Phan Thê Nhoc Ha, External Affairs Cadre Museum of Vietnamese Women. Welcome. Hello, Supreme Master Trinh Hai. Hello, Mrs. Phan. Eating meat uh, is a long-lasting habit of the people in many countries in the world, and it seems to be difficult for them to train this habit. So how can we find the practical solution and practical action to call these people to become vegetarians? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Fan. <laughs> Thank you for your thoughtful question. For those people who are in the habit of eating meat, we have to change the culture. We have to change the train. We have to show them two things. First, their existing culture does not work the way they might have thought that it does. Second, to show them a better way. The first, showing that the existing culture does not work at all in our favor of their happy life, meaning that we show the disadvantages of meat eating. This is not difficult. If people can quit cigarette, drugs, alcohol, then we could quit meat. Meat is not as addictive as drug. So, we have already gathered so many facts for Supreme Master Television, uh, which you are free to access in any way you like on www.suprememastertv.com. You can show that scientists worldwide have proved not only that meat is unhealthy, but that it is actually like a poison. Eating meat or any animal products, for that matter, is directly linked to heart disease, strokes, and all kinds of cancer. Uh, our distinguished speakers before me have mentioned it to you also. With over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year and more than 655,000 related deaths by this ailment alone, Truly, every aspect of health does benefit from the BVEG approach because so many toxic and poisonous substances are being removed from the diet through removing meat. This is not to mention the freedom from worrying about bacteria and other troubling disorders like mad cow disease, which is most sadly always fatal. I mean, anyone contracted mad cow's disease will be dead. There's no cure for it. If we can bring more information that shows graphically how the animals are slaughtered and how they suffer, for many people, this is also a turning point. Uh, on Supreme Master Television, there is a show that features animal cruelty. So we call it Stop Animal Cruelty Show every Tuesday. It is very gruesome to watch, and it brings tears and pain to our heart when we realize how animals suffer the worst cruelty of all imaginable fate. Every Tuesday we show this program that reveals the harsh, brutal reality behind the facade of a cleanly packaged piece of meat. You can download all this information and show it to people. All our shows are free to download, free of condition, free of charge. It's just for public interest and service. Now, second, to show the better way of living found through the health-restoring veg diet, we can offer veg recipes, cooking classes, to show how delicious and fulfilling it is. Again, any materials you might find helpful are freely available from Supreme Master Television and SupremeMasterTelevision.com and also on other, our other website, 
These include a wealth of free vegan recipes, information about the benefits of being vet, and descriptions of celebrities, athletes, and genius level scientists who are also vet. Spread the information far and wide to as many people as you can. As more and more adopt the organic vegan diet, the new enthusiasts will help spread the word further as well. So, you now have a noble mission, Miss Fan. Gather others of like mind. Yes. Spread the word about being veg, and you will see the changed world for the better. Nothing could be better than having more people who choose a compassionate, animal product-free lifestyle. So I wish you Godspeed to be veg, go green, and spread the information to save the planet. Thank you, Miss Fan. Thank you, Master, for the answer. Thank you for caring. Next question for Master is from Yuyin Min Lop, Head of Technical Project Department, Shareholding Project Development, and High Tech Solutions Company. Hello. <laughs> yeah, kính thưa ngài, kính chào quý vị, um, kính thưa ngài, thưa vô thường thân hại cho con xin hỏi ngài một câu hỏi ạ. Theo con được biết, những người trực tiếp phá hoại đến môi trường thường là những người sống sai chết mộng. Làm thế nào để thức tỉnh họ đổi hành động từ phá hoại thân bảo vệ môi trường ạ? Con xin cảm ơn Ngài. Cảm ơn Nguyễn Minh Lộc. Yeah, Mr. Nguyễn, thank you for your concern. And a good question, good question. It is possible to help people to change their habits because they're just habits. In most cases, people are just simply not aware and not well informed. You see, in Taiwan now, the recent poll uh, showing that 60% of the Taiwanese people are willing to be veg in order to save the planet. You see, it's getting there. Yes. So we just have to inform people. Hmm? We live our busy lives earning a living and we have been influenced a lot by society to live in a certain way, even in our food choices. We're too busy normally to think that we have better alternatives, meat being the most environmentally destructive food you can ever imagine. But once people are aware of the effect of their choices, they will change and they do change. Uh, the vest trend now is on the way, unstoppable. We have hope to save the planet. For example, see, when people see the images of the polluted air, water, and land due to meat production, if they hear or read the shocking facts that one-third of all our land is given to the meat industry, or that 80% of the deforested Amazon rainforest was for livestock grazing, or that at least 80% of all global warming is caused by meat-eating. Many people will change. I hope all will change, and very soon. In the news, you know, we often hear that meat also ruins our health. This is how millions of people switched to the eco-friendly vegan diet as soon as they took the time to be informed or to think about these objective facts. So, if we want people to protect the environment, please inform them simply of the facts. Through talking in seminars or just to your colleagues or sending them email of interesting articles or showing films so they can be aware, and then they make better choice themselves. Uh, we can be one another's awakener and teacher and encourager to protect the planet. Also, you can write to your government and the media to please address the environmental issue, because many people want to know about it and can choose to live wiser and healthier lives. This particular 
particular example is given about the destructive meat-eating behavior because it is the most important one we must awaken to and change. It is also the easiest way to make the largest protective impact on the environment. It's the fastest, least expensive, and much more effective than, uh, say, changing to a greener house or car or any other environmental protective measure. Thank you, Mr. Nguyen, for your good question. Thank you, Master. Tôi là Ngô Đức Vượng, năm nay 70 tuổi. Tôi đã ăn chay 27 năm nay rồi, trên chùa mà. Tôi là giảng viên của trường đại học. Tôi là nhà nghiên cứu về dinh dưỡng học, nghiên cứu và giảng dạy về dưỡng sinh và là một lương y. Tôi cho là để ăn một quan trọng vô cùng. Ông cha ta đã tổng kết cái rất hay, bệnh tòng khẩu nhập hầu hết bệnh là đi vào con đường ăn uống. Thực tế của bản thân tôi cũng như những người tôi giúp đỡ thì có thể chữa được tất cả các bệnh từ đơn giản cảm cúm cho đến nặng hơn như là gút, như là tiểu đường cho đến cực nặng như ung thư đều chữa khỏi. Hầu hết những khả năng đặc biệt của tôi và khả năng chữa chữa bệnh không dùng thuốc giữa bệnh mà tay không chủ yếu là nó hình thành và phát triển trong những giai đoạn tôi ăn chay và ăn vào nước ngoài. Cô thực sư rất nhấn mạnh đến tính chất ăn uống ảnh hưởng đến môi trường điều đó cực kỳ quan trọng. Hội thảo này là trên một cái vấn đề rất là quan trọng, một vấn đề rất là thời sự hiện nay và tôi rất là hân hạnh và vui là được tham gia vào cái hội thảo. Đây là một cái dịp tốt để tôi có thể trình bày cái cách nhìn của tôi và trình bày những cái kết quả của các cái nhà khoa học thế giới để đi đến cái việc là ăn chay này có một cái thì cái quan điểm quan hệ rất là quan trọng đối với việc bảo vệ môi trường và chống lại biến đổi khí hậu. Tôi rất là cảm ơn ban tổ chức và đối với hàng nghìn người đến tham gia hội thảo. Và ngoài ra thì cái thành công mà có lẽ là lớn là qua cái đài truyền hình thì chúng ta có thể đưa cái thông điệp này đến rất nhiều người trên thế giới và đấy là một cái bước đầu. Tôi cảm nhận này rất là tuyệt, chưa bao giờ tôi có thể cảm nhận tới một cái bầu không khí rất là nhiệt huyết từ rất nhiều người ở các quốc gia đến đây và đặc biệt là được nghe Ngài Thanh Hải đã chia sẻ rất nhiều những điều lý thú trong cuộc đời của mình. Nếu như mà bầu không khí mà nó ảnh hưởng và nước biển dâng lên thì chúng ta có thể thấy rằng người dân Việt Nam đang bị hứng chịu những cái thảm cảnh rất là lớn bởi vì hầu hết tất cả những cái dãy biển thì hiện nay Việt Nam chúng ta hầu hết là sẽ bị ảnh hưởng đến cái môi trường này. Xin cảm ơn Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư. Ngài đã có một những cái về tâm hồn. Mỗi một người cũng hãy lên hành động ngay vì cái mục tiêu cao cả. Mỗi người phải hành động gấp rút và trở thành một cái sứ mệnh. Thật mà hiện nay chúng ta gặp phải từ lũ lục rồi hạn hán những cái thiên tai, một số những mặt bệnh tật cho con người chúng ta. Chúng ta làm mà chúng ta không suy nghĩ gì những hành động của chúng ta. Bản thân chúng ta đã phá rừng. Ta có thể giảm lại việc đi xe gắn máy chúng ta đi xe đạp thì nó sẽ là không có gây ô nhiễm chúng ta cố gắng làm sao là trồng rừng bảo vệ rừng rồi là chúng ta đi xe đạp chúng ta có thể bớt lại ăn thịt ăn cá bằng những thực vật mà chúng ta chăn nuôi những cái loại đó thì làm sao mở những trang trại thì những cái nơi đây là những nơi phát thải các cái chất các khí thải là nó hâm nóng lên toàn cầu rồi nó ảnh hưởng đến ô nhiễm môi trường chưa kể những lúc này chúng ta thấy là những dịch cúm nó phát xuất từ những động vật những gia súc những cái con vật chúng ta chăn nuôi à, như vậy thì chúng ta cũng nên chú trọng đến cái việc ăn uống của chúng ta